and Jensen Ackles and Jared Panalecki. The big girls are in the house. Jensen a question in front of all y'all. Does this feel like we're about twice as high as we usually are? Yeah, but I did some edibles this morning. So. <laughs> Anybody in law enforcement? <laughs> so speaking of high, what's up with this photo? Yeah. 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 Well, I gotta explain. Peace and love, bro. When we took this picture, they cropped it. Uh, you can't see Jensen's left hand. So. Oh, yeah. It was like this. <laughs> I'm not sure what I'm doing there. That's some, I, I'm hoping I'm just breathing in. <laughs> Breathing something in. <laughs> uh, how's everybody doing this morning? Thank y'all for uh, coming out, bringing us out. It was a quick trip for us, obviously, from Austin up to Dallas. That's pretty right. badass. Uh, who's from Texas? <laughs> who's from Dallas County? <laughs> who's from San Antonio? Wait, who's from Collin County? Hey, there we go. You didn't know what that is, did you? I have no idea. Well, guess what? You're in it. It's Collin County. I'm, 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 who's from New York? You're at the wrong con. That's, uh, that's not today. Anybody from Bear County? All right. Bear is spelled Bexar. B-E-X-A-R. Yeah, Travis County. Yeah, there's a, there's some odd pronunciations in Central Texas. <laughs> what a loop. My favorite is what looks like Manchaka. Manchak. It's Manchak. No. Beautiful. You're saying it wrong. Yeah, you can always tell people weren't from here. They're like, oh. You didn't know that? No, I don't know Manchaka. Yeah, do you say Manchaka? Of course I do. Gosh, you know what? Keep saying it. That way we know you're from out of town. <laughs> and I say Voluntarily, right? K O E N I G is Koenig. Take a look on Koenig. If you didn't see it spelled out, you'd be driving like that's that's Koenig. Yeah. Koenig. I got where's Koenig? Uh, you didn't have in uh, Oklahoma. Green. Anyway, Green. welcome to Dallas. Uh, we're happy you're here. A lot of ass. Hey, 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 hey man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they took it down. I got it, I got it. They took it down. <laughs> 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 Alright, uh, this is the most action you've seen in weeks. Oh, I'm married, it's been years. Oh, that's true. That's true. <laughs> Sorry. Good morning! <laughs> no, hey. Starting out with a bang! Apologies to any uh, juveniles in the room. Uh, the bank, you, say, you, say that. You, you wish. Uh, well done. Well done. Stop it! It's a, it's a little bit longer. All right, before we get ourselves into legal trouble, uh, we would like to see. Yep, that was a fast hand. We were going to ask. I didn't finish the question though. I was going to say, who doesn't have a question? Okay, so she doesn't have a question. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. I know I'm Look, it's not so We're gonna get you a microphone so everyone can hear. I can all hear her already. It's true. <laughs> I promise I am not gonna cry. I'm gonna try real hard. Well, you're uh, already I crying. <laughs> I call bullshit. Supernatural, the show, has been so much to me. My granddad. 
that was the reason why I am into the show now. Every Thursday, we would get our food, we would get our drinks, and then we would go into his room and watch Supernatural. No way. In 2013, he passed away. And I want to say... You're good, girl. You're with family. And I want to say, I love y'all so much, y'all. Truly. And I mean truly. Help me through that time when my granddad was gone. Y'all are like big brothers to me, and I love y'all so much. And so thank you from thank the you. bottom of my heart. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you for sharing you. that. Thank you for sharing that. Sorry for your loss. Uh, I think, on a serious note, that's kind of one of the things that kept us going when it was, frankly, shitty for us, you know, because we had kids and wives that were not only in a different state, but in a different country. And we'd, we'd hear stories from people about how it helped connect them with loved ones and uh, helped us go 15 years strong, 15 and a half. So thank you. Sorry for your loss. Thank you for being here. All right, let's go right over here. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Amy. <laughs> Hi, Amy. We're going to give you a, get you a mic here. Stand up, honey. Stand up. There you go. Hi, I'm Amy, and uh, I'm a... You said that already. <laughs> this is take two. Hi, take two. Uh, I'm a high school English teacher, and in drama units in the past, I've shown my favorite episode, The French Mistake, to illustrate breaking the fourth wall. So I was wondering if you had any recommendations on other episodes I could show and keep getting paid to watch Supernatural. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um... And I'm going through puberty, so my, my voice cracks right now. <laughs> Finally, I'm a late bloomer. Uh, no, uh, just because I just watched this movie uh, last week with, with our kids when we were all home because of ice apocalypse. Uh, so I think you can watch Groundhog Day and Mystery Spot and watch a great movie and a really fun episode. Well, fun, depending on how you describe fun. You guys a bunch. But, uh, but yeah, I, we, we watch Groundhog Day. But well, what's the lesson there? Yeah. You always come back to life. <laughs> you know, mystery spot. What's, but what's the? Because the lesson for think, for French mistake is the, the breaking of the fourth wall. It's teaching people that that's how that how how to do that within yeah, a story. It literally happens. I think uh, the lesson of mystery spot is probably uh, you get another chance tomorrow. I love when, that. When it's best, you know. And obviously that was a strange situation, but try and make every day count because uh, you don't know when it's your last or when you get to do it again the next day. So, nah. awesome. it's my bad. You I'll know. say uh, um, a lesson in overcoming your fears, yellow fever. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Changing channels, don't go on a Japanese game show. <laughs> actually use changing channels to show like myth arc of like Loki, you know? Yeah, yeah. I've been creative. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm getting creative on how to watch Supernatural in the classroom. That's amazing. How, how to justify watching a TV show in an English room. Yeah, my, my, my mother was, uh, she's retired now, but she was an English teacher in high school for many decades. So, bravo. Thank you. I know it's difficult. Thanks. Uh, I'm going to stay this way. I see you. Yep. Hi, my name is Tina. That's uh, first convention. Tina. Tina, yep. Hi, Tina. Uh, so my question is, I'm a bit of a quote junkie. And That's a so statement, not a question. <laughs> <laughs> my question is, uh, favorite quotes? Leave the guns. Quote, quote, quote junkie. I thought she had a lot of coats in her garden. <laughs> bit of a coat junkie. Well, you live in the wrong state, because this is not a... You're from Alaska? You are far from home. Uh, a quote. Uh, yeah. Leave the gun, take the cannoli. <laughs> I thought I was wrong once, but I was mistaken. Life lessons by Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> there are a bunch. 
much. My favorite. You got a lot of. You, 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 you're a bit of a quote. Love junkie as well. And a jacket junkie. <laughs> and, and, a, and a coat junkie. Over coat junkie. Uh, it's true. My favorite one, honestly, is uh, pain is mandatory, suffering is optional. Um, that that's helped me on many occasions. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I like um, I like this one. I use this one a lot, or say this one a lot. But it's uh, taking care of yourself takes care of more than just yourself. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. On that same line, uh, dude, you got a fucking dart in your neck. <laughs> also, a lot of life lessons in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what's your favorite quote, Tina? Uh, a lot. Um, I'm totally Say it again. Wait, wait, wait. Can we get her a mic? Yeah. <laughs> I heard like half of that. Fairy tales don't tell children dragons are real. Children already know dragons are real. Fairy tales tell children that dragons can be killed. Oh, oh interesting. What about this? People don't what understand. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> you know, bad, guys. Uh, bad guys. Bad guys? Yeah, yeah, bad guys. That means bad guys? <laughs> bad guys. Bad guys. <laughs> what about this? Still don't get it. <laughs> people don't have feelings. <laughs> feelings have people. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. If you think about it. You know. What was that one? <laughs> kind of. People don't have feelings. Feelings have people. No. I don't think that makes sense. <laughs> Feelings have people. The point, the point that I gather from it is that, you know, feelings are not pathological. You can be angry, you can be jealous. That's not who, that's not who you are, it's something that is, is telling you to feel a certain way. So why don't you just say that? That's it, yeah, that's it. Uh, Does that have anything to do with bad guys? I don't know. <laughs> All right, all you. Okay. Yes, sir. And the beanie there. Yeah. Uh, here's the, hey, we'll get you a mic right here. He's got some picks. Yeah, here's your picks. Amazing. What is that? He has some badass picks. The, the ones I gave here. you last night. Yeah. That yeah, yeah, yeah. For him. Oh, oh, oh. Guitar uh, picks. It's in my bag right now. I thought he was giving me some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> here's those picks you wanted. <laughs> Do not Just keep that between you and your feelings. <laughs> not suitable for work. The question is, when is Sam and Dean going to finally realize that his son is in trouble by the demons that are hunting him, and when they're going to get their ass back down to earth and take care of him? Uh, yeah. Yeah. In season 16. Yeah. 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 Stay tuned. Yeah, we, we go to principal production uh, in about a week. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a good question and hopefully something that gets uh, gets addressed um, when we uh, when they call us and say, hey, you guys want to put your boots back on? HBO. <laughs> HBO. HBO. <laughs> someone, someone yelled Cinemax. <laughs> I'm going to go way over here at the ball cap. Yep. Hey, I'm Cameron, and just want to uh, thank you guys for the show, because I just told you guys yesterday, it's a huge um, bonding experience for my brother Ian and I. Yeah. You guys, Sam and Dean, Ian and I. It's weird how accurate they are to us. <laughs> but um, my question is, in the show, what is your guys' favorite kill? And Jensen, you cannot say Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite kill? Yeah. <laughs> Technically, I killed her. <laughs> Are you reading my mind? Uh, what's that? I mean, I he's gonna hate, he's gonna hate hate me saying this, but um, I think I think when we when we bested God, Chuck. Yeah. 
And also, like, you know, it, it wasn't just some random monster of the week kind of thing. It was, uh, it was somebody that we'd had, yeah, many, many uh, years of, of work together and friendship. And so to be able to do, to, whenever we get to, to, to work with people that we've got such a, a great history with and relationship with, it's always, it always makes it a little bit elevated. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll take a good uh, vampire nest killing any day. Yeah, except for the last one. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta watch out for that rebar. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give a strange answer. Uh, I didn't like killing this person or this character, but I, as a storyteller or someone who loves stories, uh, Rowena. Because it was so difficult. A for all of y'all who have the absolute pleasure of being Ruthie, she is the most wonderful person on the planet. Uh, and she was so fantastic as Rowena, but that dynamic between Sam and Rowena, because they always had yeah. something about you know, studying and about the academia of it and looking into spells, like that was so tragic yeah. to me, to think of Sam having to kill her. Um, that, was, uh, that was so difficult, and I remember the day vividly. Um, and it was like truly emotional. Like, God, okay, all right. This is like we, we had when when, uh, when Bobby Singer died. Uh, we talked to the producers and the writers, and they were like, We don't like it either, but it's great television. We're like, Fair enough. So that was kind of a, an initial lesson. And so when the Rowena Sam storyline kind of came to its conclusion, uh, that was also really powerful for me. Yeah. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Uh, right here. I talk really loud, but... No shit. I'm a vocal performance major. Um, no, I, I have just recently become um, in the fandom here, and but I feel like, as probably everybody in this room does, I know Sam and Dean inside and out. I feel like... Whoa. I, oh. 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 I wish that's, I knew Sam and Dean. <laughs> By the way, just just for uh, just just so y'all know, she's actually not talking into the microphone right now. <laughs> that is just her talking. But I, what I what I long to do, sorry. What I long to do is anyway. What I <laughs> and if you listen to me very closely. Go Sarah Dean's a pretty fucking cool. I'm really glad I could be y'all's entertainment. Uh, right. The the. What I really want to know is like something really cool and awesome about Jared and Jensen, and just something maybe that. How much time you got? <laughs> Did you not see the picture? <laughs> 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 something you can't read on Wiki. Yeah, just something cool about you. I think it's all there. <laughs> I think we're remarkably boring. Yeah, uh, sir. <laughs> No. No way. No way. Oh, I'll say something. I'll say something. I think about. Yeah. Whatever you yeah. say. <laughs> uh, this will probably come as a shock, but I've done a questionnaire uh, a few times, and guessing about him. In or, Cosmo or? or uh, totally, totally. Uh, Cosmo, Seventeen magazine, all those. No, uh, weirdly, because of where we stand literally right now in our lives, we're actually both introverts. Like I, yeah, we, I, I, I speak for myself for sure, and knowing him as I've known him for 20 years, uh, oh God, uh, we'd much rather stay home with our wives and kids than go out to a red carpet or an event, and th that's kind of like a, it takes energy like yeah. I think extroverts are like feel energized being you know like in front of a camera I think you and I are both like no we we don't want it like we'd rather just fucking chill out like I had a great time during COVID just stuck in my home with my wife and kids I know it was that sounds amazing but I know I, I don't mean that to sound heartless I realize so many people lost loved ones and lost jobs and mortgages but I think having done uh, damn near 15 straight years of flying back and forth and being here and being there and being everywhere. I was like, oh, I just get to like sit on the couch with my wife and my sons and my daughter. So 
I think that's probably the most surprising, is that if we both did a proper psychological questionnaire, we'd both come out as inverts. He answered for both of us. That was... <laughs> See, he doesn't even want to answer. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> All right, Becky Rosen. <laughs> uh, okay, fine. Okay. Not fine, okay. okay. Fine, fine. <laughs> yay. <laughs> Put your hand down. <laughs> uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, two things. First of all, is that the stand that Jensen threw down? Because you keep adjusting it. That's a good question. Uh, uh, did he touch it? The what? No, what did I do? Uh, uh, when you threw the stand down. When you kick the, kick the stand. Last night. Last night. I don't it. know what she's talking about. <laughs> Is that on video? Yeah. Roll the tape. I got it right here. If it is, does somebody have hand sanitizer? Because I've been touching it. So. Did I break a stand last night? Yeah. I did? Yeah. Well, listen, when I, when I come on stage and there's music, I, I black out. So I don't, can't be responsible. You turn the, you turn the, the face. You start throwing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a problem. I'm working on it. Um, did I really break that stand? Yeah. Well, shouldn't have been there. <laughs> Truth. Truth. Uh, and about last night. About last night. Whoa! Oh. Yes. It was magic. You know, it was. You know, I felt it. Thank you. Okay. I was just going to say that. <laughs> That's it, no question. You were phenomenal. I'll say it. I don't know what she's talking about. I, I just do my thing, you know. Yes, you did. Why did you look? That's what I'm proud of that. Well, thank you very much. The question is. Oh, question. Um, the question is, with all of the different projects that you have been doing since Supernatural, and I mean, Jensen, it's like five fingers, five different pies, you know, and you are just... Somebody said pie. <laughs> yes, I guess. Easy. <laughs> and with you, you can just keep broadening Walker and uh, just creating this, these new depths to the characters and the storylines and everything. And... What can you not do, quite honestly, Jensen? Apparently keep a mic stand intact. <laughs> well, you have to have at least one flaw. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's it. Found it. Moving on. So my question is, have you, did you really um, think about how much your, not notoriety, but just the awareness of people around the world was going to explode with you? being on, you know, Amazon Prime, and, and, and you just, you know, it's like such a big impact, and then so many people are following you now that you know who you were, and it's sure. got to be just huge. Or, or didn't know Supernatural, Yeah, uh, largely. Yeah, Supernatural. Yeah, I don't, I mean, I guess to kind of quickly break it down, I, I don't think he and I go into any of these um, jobs or roles or stories thinking about the impact that it's going to have externally. I think we go into it as, you know, they, they hire us to, to come and do a job, and, and he and I both are, um, uh, we take that job seriously, even though it may not look like it all the time. Um, but we also, we, we have a lot of fun doing the job because we truly enjoy doing what we do. That being said, we're not thinking, oh, let's do this because I want the effect that that's going to have on a on a, a greater you know, scale. Um, we're just doing our job, and, yeah. and hopefully it resonates to, to people. Hopefully, uh, somebody out there um, is entertained. Yeah. Um, and if if that's the case, then we've done our job. Yeah, and that having said, and I, I again, I'm, are you not entertained? Not entertained? <laughs> that having been said, that's totally true. But I. That's the best way to say this. We, it, there was like, um, like five or six years ago, the, the Powerball got to like $2 billion or something absurd. 
And so we bought some tickets for like 20 bucks or whatever. And um, we, it was like, it was gonna be on Saturday and on Friday we're on set filming and it's 4 a.m. We're miserable, we're tired, like we have to go home, like, not have to, but like flying soon. And he and I looked at each other and we were like, all right, here's the deal. If you win tomorrow, are you coming back to work on Monday? <laughs> I already knew the answer. And he already knew the answer. The answer is yes. Um, and so whether, if, if we take a project or commit to something, if somebody came up to us and said, hey, we're going to film this movie for the next month. It's going to be long hours, this and that. But it's going to make like a billion dollars at box office. Or said, hey, we're going to make this movie for the next month. It's going to be long hours, but we're never going to release it. We would still do every day just as hard as either or. It's not like I'm doing it hoping and for him as well. Like, I just do the hardest work I can. I, 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 it's therapeutic for me as well to explore different kind of lives and lifestyles and relationships. Uh, so if you tell me, no, nope, we're shooting an independent film that's never going to get released, or we're shooting Avengers that's going to have, or Avatar or something, I'm going to work as hard no matter what. And so is this guy. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I think we got time for one more. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go Hanny. Go Danny. 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 I heard Hanny. Hanny? <laughs> Is Hanny a name? My hearing's not good. Lee. <laughs> Hi, Danny. Hi, Danny. Hi, Jerry. Hi. Hi. Hi, Jensen. Hi. <laughs> um, Jensen, you owe my sister a beer from last year. Got sure. that. Um, actually, 24 to be exact. Did I break your beer? Yeah. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> Shh, they don't know. That's, that's coffee. It's <laughs> just coffee. Um, <laughs> You're on fire. I'm trying. I'm sorry, Danny. Sorry. No, no, yeah. no, it's so, okay. yeah, it's I, why, do I, why do I owe your sister? Uh, Last year, she asked you to go out for a birthday beer, and I said, well, since her birthday is on the 24th, you owe her 24. And you said I could come. I owe 24 but beers. I, but it's I wasn't, more expensive. I wasn't 21 yet. I'm 21 now, so I oh. can go. Um, so I owe you 21 beers as well? Yes. Okay. It's 45 beers. That's... You do math fast. It's going to be a rough morning. All right. So, we're getting drunk together. What else can we do for you? Um, no. No. Um, <laughs> he's going to bring another stand. Um, but I was just wondering what your guys' version of... Um, self-care was like for your mental health and wellness and what your family does for self-care now in life or like when i was 21. Uh, sorry i said wife wife like with your wife and kids not 21 no. beers or 24. um that's a great question you know i uh, cliffy uh told me about something that i've been watching and it's been really meaningful and maybe some of y'all watched it and if you haven't, I'd highly recommend it. It's called Limitless with Chris Hemsworth. Yeah. It's yeah. on Disney Plus, yeah. and it's really fucking interesting. Uh, and I think a lot of the stuff that he's talking about really resonates with me. Like I'm very similar. I have a tough time winding down. Like I go back to monkey brain, which a doctor said, not me, but where you panic about stuff, you're always worried. And so certain breathing exercises. Uh, I also I think when. I blame Jensen. When when we ran the marathon together in Seattle, the the endurance training kind of thing really helped because you just yeah. you put your shoes on, you get your you know music and your watch to track your heart rate, and then you know you're gonna be on the road for an hour, hour and a half, and so you have to put everything else away. And so um, I think like for Cliffy, uh, he likes long drives. You know, he's has, has a week off. And he's like, oh, I'm just gonna go for a drive. Gets back, like, hey, where'd you go? He's like, well, I went to Vancouver, then I went over to Toronto, then I went down to Florida. Like, you got like three days, like, what are you doing? But I, like, find some way that you can, over a long duration, and I know life is busy, but somewhere where you can get past that really uncomfortable point of, I should be doing something, I should be doing something. Was, I've got to answer emails, I've got to make phone calls. Um, but breathing, like box breathing, like breathe in for four seconds, hold it, breathe out for four seconds, hold it, and repeat has helped me a lot, because I, I sweat, I'm always anxious and nervous. Uh, breathing seems to help, yeah. You got it, thank you, Dan. Uh, I like to play music. I, I'll just sit down with the guitar. Um, and a, a lot of whiskey. 
<laughs> 20, right. 21 plus 24. That's, that's my boyfriend. That's what you should. Yeah. There you go. Awesome. Uh, thank you all. No, it, so works, it works, it works. It works, it works. We'll be here all day, so we'll see a lot more of it. Thanks, guys. Thank you.